Hey everyone, how you doing? So, have you ever been in that situation where your car is playing you up but you don't quite know where to go? The obvious choice is to try something like VCDS, but you know how expensive that is. I think it's about £399 for 10 VINs or £599 for unlimited. Who's got that kind of money? So, where do you go? Nice alternative. OBD. 11. That's what we're going to be doing today. So let's go and take a look and see how we can use this device and what you need and how good is it? Is it any good? Let's see. Okay, so I've been running my race chip now for about a week and um, it's been very good. I took it to work with me the other day, did an 18 mile run and um, had the car in race mode and it was fantastic. However, I did think that it initially solved my um, issue with my misfiring, remember I told you, the car misfires. And when I took it for the initial run with the race chip, it seemed to be great, but taking the car for a long run, the misfire is still there. So I need to get to the bottom of what this is. Now, my copy of VCDS is an old copy of VCDS. I've got an old um, OBD connector and I can't upgrade it, so I need to buy a new one. And at this stage, I'm not really willing to pay for a brand new one. So is there anything alternative out there that can do exactly the same thing as um, VCDS or even a close second? I'll be happy with that. And sure enough, there is. So. Let's take a look and see what that is. Well, you know what it is, it's OBD11. But I'm gonna show you that um, product in a more detail. We'll take it for a run, and we're gonna talk about some of the things that you need to actually run the OBD11. Um, so phone, device, etc. And to finish up the video, I've been, I've been bidding on a couple of cars this week, and I've been watching one. So we're gonna take a look at that as well. So let's get on and um, let's get in the car and see what we can find with what the issue is, basically. Let's go and do that. Okay, so the OBD11 kit, what you get essentially is the OBD sensor and then you need an Android phone to work it, okay? Now, I've looked on their forums to see whether they are going to do an, an iPhone or iOS they have no interest whatsoever in doing an iOS. There is about four pages going back from 2016 and they definitely do not have at this time any interest in doing an, an iOS, which is a shame, but I think looking at the forum posts, one of the reasons being is the fact that um, Apple make it very difficult for them as developers um to um to use all the facilities that they need in order to get this to work so at the moment it's an android only so if you've got an ios phone <laughs> you're gonna have to find yourself an android one fortunately i have one this is my old um samsung note 4 and um i basically haven't used this for a number of years, so I had to buy a new battery for it. But I've installed the app. So here's the app here. And um, it, um, I also bought a professional license. So you, when you buy the actual device, and that's all you need really, you buy the device and then you download the app and then you, um, it finds the device and, and, and that is it. I'll show you that in a second. But what that then allows you to do you can then buy a professional license and then you can do long programming like you do on VCDS. So if you go online, you want to unlock a feature in your car, as long as the long programming sequence is in online and there's plenty of places online where you can find those, then you can pretty much do that. So anyway, how good is it? Well, let's find out, shall we? Oh, just one small tip. So I bought this model, okay? They do another one that has a little key ring on the top. I strongly suggest you get that because when you plug these in, it's very difficult to take out after. Uh, I almost had to get a screwdriver to pry it out. Fortunately, I was able to get my nail underneath it just to get it out. But get the one with the little key ring. It's so much easier. It's a couple of pound more. 
Um, I don't know why they don't do it by standard really to have it in there. I guess because OBDs on OBD sockets on different cars are in different location. Anyway, that's a little small tip for you. So let's just see how good this product really is. I'm gonna plug it in and then we're gonna do an initial, I'm gonna take you through the whole process. The only thing you won't see is the um, registration because I've, I've already registered it in my other car when I did some um, scanning. So you're not gonna see that process here. Another thing you need to be aware of, and this is really important, you need to have Wi-Fi. This device won't work unless you've got Wi-Fi. Now I have Wi-Fi just about on my phone. Um, I've got two bars, so hopefully where we're sitting now we shouldn't be shouldn't be a problem, but we'll see. But yeah, you need to it needs Wi-Fi to operate. So that's another thing you just need to take into consideration if you're gonna buy this. Right, let's get this connected and let's see how we go. Okay, so the OBD connector is in. When you plug it in, incidentally, you'll see a red light come on the device, so you know you've plugged it in. That's with the ignition on. So at the moment, you can see that my ignition is on, not started, that's all you need to do. Make sure the ignition's on. Then back to the device, and then get the device started. It will then load, you then connect it. So it's gonna find my device, and what it will do, it will find anything that's got a, a Bluetooth connection. You can also see that it's already got my car details in there from the previous connection that I had. Okay. So it's found two devices. None of them is that, so. I might need to plug that in a little bit further. Let's do that. Let's try that again. There we are. Wasn't plugged in properly. So you can see my OBD11 is the middle one. I'm going to click on that. Come on, you can do it. Now the reason why it might not be connecting is because my Wi-Fi here is very weak. In fact, if you look at the bars there, you'll see that there is hardly anything. So I may need to reposition the car. Okay, so I moved it slightly. Now it's connected up. So what we're going to do is, we're, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a scan to see what issues it picks up. So this will scan all the engine, braking systems, seat belts. Basically it's scanning 17 systems. So while it's doing that, I'm going to speed this bill up. Okay, so if you can see that very closely, right, it's found five faulty control units. Okay, so let's see what they are. Press and hold. We don't want to clear the faults, we want to see what they are first of all. So click on the option there, and as you can see, if any issues are found, it highlights those in red. So you can see it's found nine. Um, it's got an issue with electrical. So, so far, sound system and radio. Okay, so let's just go to the top one. So the top one is engine. So let's take a look at the engine. Let's see what codes it's found with the engine. So we can look at the faults and it says fuel pressure regulator two and clutch input right so let's see what that is ah p2294 now i know what that is 2294 is my fuel pressure regulator and fuel pump that's what that is i know exactly what that is now the good thing about this what you can then do is you can go on google and see what that is 
So if I press the Google link, it will actually open up Google and it will search for that. And it tells us what the code is. So it says that the code 2294 means when um, it, it means that the engine control module ECM has detected a malfunction in the control circuit of the fuel pressure regulator. That makes sense actually. That would explain why I'm getting the um, misfire. Okay, that's really good. Let's go back. So clutch switch control, let's see what that is. That's intermittent. Um, actually, I think I know what that is as well. So that is going to be the switch that when you start the car, you, you push the clutch in. That's what that's gonna be, I bet you. P704, clutch switch, yeah. And you are clutch pedal input circuit malfunction. Right, okay. I'm not so worried about that one. Um, so I think we may have found the reason why my car is not, let's move this over here. I think I can move this here now because we got the codes. I think that's gonna be the reason why my car doesn't, um, is misfiring. So that's really good to see. I think we, yeah, I think we can sort that. Right, central electrics. Now, my my windscreen wipers, they they work, but they work very sporadically. So they're working at the moment, but 10 minutes ago they weren't. So I reckon, oh, I need to move it back because it's trying to load the data and needs internet connection. That's the only bugbear. So I reckon that's what that code is. But let's see. All right, faults. Okay, let's have a look at faults. Driver windscreen wiper. <laughs> there we are. No signal. Right, so. Hmm. Very interesting. So intermittent wipers, and that's very true. Okay, what's this one here? Excessive voltage. Signal for rear screen heater. Activation of horn. Well, my horn's working fine, so I'm not sure what that would be, or why that would be, but anyway. Just looking to see if they got UK along here, but I don't think so. I think it's just English, American. Okay, so there's a few issues there that I need to resolve. Um, let's go back. What else have we got? Sound system. I'm not worried about the found sound system because I'm, I'm actually going to change the radio. So well, let's, we'll take a look at that anyway while we're here. This is a ah, right front treble speaker. Okay, that's interesting. I am interested in that one. So what that's saying is that one of the speakers are not working. Okay, so that's pretty good. Right, okay. Um, so my initial reaction to this is other than the fact that you need internet connectivity, I'm quite taken back steering angle voltage now oh, I know what that is I'm not worried about that so we can ignore that that's what happens when the battery runs out you need to just do a full lock and then that controls that so yeah so my initial reaction this is a really good thing um, for the money it's about 60 pound that's with the professional license to allow you to do long coding now what this also does is it allows you to add features to your car but the way it does it there's two ways you can do that and this is why you need the professional licensing you can do long coding and you can't do a long coding unless you've got the professional license which i have or they do adaptions so essentially what that means is 
we're not going to do it here. Um, what it, what that means is that it has pre-packaged um, solutions that you can just uh, in, um, activate in your car, and that's really good. It saves you having to do long coding. If you're not used to long coding, it's um, it can be quite daunting. Um, but at least with this way, that you can actually add features to your car. And they pre they they pre package these for you. Um, probably better showing you that in in my in the A4 because there's a few things that I can add in the A4. But in terms of your basic engine diagnostics, I think this is a pretty um, this is a pretty good system to have, and it's cheap, so um, it does exactly what you need to do. Okay, so after that run, we are scanning to see what codes we have, if any. I know I've got two codes have come up, so let's see what we find on this occasion. So I'll speed this bit up. Okay, so the car is telling me that it's not finding any faulty control units, which is good, I guess. Um, yeah, that's good. Okay, so that's it. The car is now reset. All the um, codes are gone. I will see if that's still the case at the end of the week. I highly doubt it. But if that uh, fuel injection one comes back, then not fuel injection, the um, P0294 code comes back, then I'm gonna know that that's the fuel pump and I'll have to replace that comforting in some sense I know what it is so is this OBD 11 is it worth it yeah it is I guess the next question you should be asking is is it as good as VCDS certainly from a programming perspective the fact that you can do quick adaptions and you have the pay um, system I guess that's how they can offer it free so it's worth it from that because then you can pay for what you want um, in terms of ease of use Yet to be seen. My uh, when I was using the app, it crashed about five times. When I used it on my A4, although I was able to turn on some features on my A4 a lot easier because it has the pre-purchased codes rather than doing the um, long coding. But if I wanted to do the long coding, then certainly if possible to do that um, without um, having to pay. So yeah, it's really good for that. Um, I probably still will buy the pro version of VCTS once I get a few cars under my belt because it just makes sense to have both as an option. This is a very quick scanner, but the issue, the limitation that you need to have Wi-Fi in order for it to work, that could be a problem. Um, but other than that, it's very good. And um, it does what it says on the tin, and it is a good um, alternative to VCDS. Just be great if you can make an iOS version. Okay, so let's talk about Copart. So a couple of cars I was bidding for didn't win those. And the reason why I didn't win those was because the bids that I put in weren't really high enough. So here's one now that you can see on screen. So this is a white TT. In fact, this one I was watching it live, but it went for higher than I was prepared to pay for. So as you can see in those bids. Um, and then the TT, sorry, the R8, R8 came up and if you have a look at that now 
absolutely nothing happened. It sold at the price that it was last bidded before the auction when no one bid on it. So did that person get themselves a bargain? No, back on. The R8 is now back on Copart. So the seller wanted more money and the person who was the highest bidder wasn't prepared to pay that. So it's now back straight on. So let's see what happens with that. But I'm watching a few other R8, sorry, TTs. And next week's video is going to be a five things that you need to know on Copart to be successful in the UK. So look forward to seeing that. That should be good. So anyway, that ends this week. Don't forget, subscribe, because that helps me out a lot. So, and um, also tell us your ideas that you want to see uh, on this channel, as I always say, and I'm getting some feedback from a few of you now. So that's really great to see. So I will see you next week. And don't forget next week, we will be going in depth into co -part. That should be a good episode. Um, have a good week. See you next Monday. Always.